Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I'm the host and the founder of the Order of Man podcast and movement, and I want to welcome you here. Uh, it's my goal to give you everything that you need to step up as a man. I get emails and messages every day from guys who are struggling with addiction and relationship issues and working on their health and working on their businesses. And a lot of these guys are really struggling. And if that's you, you're in the right place. If you're not struggling, but want to take your life to the next level, you're also in the right place. We interview incredible men, extract their knowledge and wisdom and experience, and then disseminate that information to you so that you can use it to enhance your own life. Now, the Friday Field Notes is a little bit different. I share with you some thoughts that have been bouncing around in my brain from throughout the week. And I've got one today that I think is going to be beneficial for not only you, but also for me. I got to say that as I do the podcast and I share emails and messages about becoming a better man. It's very therapeutic for me because I need this information just as much as any other man out there, maybe more so. Uh, so this is something uh, when it comes to uh, internal versus external validation that I've been thinking about and working on. And I heard a message just yesterday at an event that I was at uh, and, and it kind of hit home on this. And I thought I would share some thoughts with you. So before I get into that, just want to mention that we've got our newsletter that we're building out. This is to help us uh, be a little bit more independent from the social media tech type overlords uh, who want to throttle and pull back our accounts and, and not allow us to have the reach that uh, we've earned over the past seven years. And I see the writing on the wall a bit as it pertains to uh, limited reach and uh, potentially even throttling and censoring of our message and our accounts. So if you want to hear from me directly, if you want insights, knowledge, information about upcoming events and books and different discounts we have going on, new merchandise in the store, and be in the know with the Order of Man movement, then you can go to orderofman.com and sign up for our emails, orderofman.com, and you'll see a sign up box there. All right, guys, let's now talk about the power of internal validation, because <clears throat> it's very clear to me that uh, even in my own life, I have a need at times, more often than frankly, I would like to admit, to be validated by external factors, whether that's my children, uh, my wife, even you guys, or friends and family members, that I want to validate me, that I want them to make me feel better about my own performance. And my mood and behavior is all too often contingent upon the way that they're responding to it. And that's a problem because what ends up happening is we give over the power and authority of our lives uh, because we're waiting for somebody else to behave. And they may not ever behave that we want them to, which is somewhat unfortunate. But if you turn the table, you wouldn't want anybody else forcing behavior on you. And yet we hope that other people will act a certain way that validates our desire to show up or our performance or how good or important or special we are. And so as I was listening to this person speak the other day, uh, they talked about the concept between personalities that either attempt to get people to do what they want through domination uh, or to get people to do what they want through dependency. And if we operate at either one of those spectrums, we're going to create some real problems in our lives. If we attempt to manipulate and force and coerce and strong arm those closest to us to comply, to do what we want them to do, of course, there's going to be bitterness and contention and animosity in their lives and in our lives and them directed at us. Now, alternatively, and this is where I didn't take issue with what the person was saying, but it really made me think, how do I show up and how do I behave? Well, a lot of us are very dependent, overly dependent on other people. And that's what I was saying earlier is that we attempt to get them to act or behave a certain way so that we feel better about our own lives and maybe our own shortcomings. And then I think what ends up happening in either one of these scenarios, whether we attempt to dominate others or we're overly dependent on others is we're just creating these landmines all around the relationships that we have. And everybody's walking around on eggshells, trying not to blow themselves up. And then what ends up happening is it blows up. People are angry. People are bitter. They're contentious. They're, they're hostile, maybe even towards one another. 
because they're tired of being manipulated. They're tired of being controlled. They're tired of the anger and the hostility and the frustration that's built up within the relationship. So with my own personal relationships, I want those to be loving. I want those to be supportive. Uh, I want to be in a place where I can serve my family and I can serve my community and I can serve my friends. Um, I don't do it for their validation. I'm not saying that I, let me rephrase that. Oftentimes I do that for their validation. I don't want to do that for their validation. I want to show up in a powerful way as a man and feel good about the way I'm showing up, regardless of whether or not somebody behaves a certain way or even acknowledges it. It should be enough that we acknowledge in ourselves that we are doing good and we are doing right. Now, ironically enough, when we feel better about ourselves and we have this internal validation, this fire within us, because we know we're doing what's right, we start to receive more of that external validation. But it's a bit of a trap too, because that external validation feels really good. Sometimes we can even get it without having to do any effort, but you can't have internal validation without the effort because you know, and you cannot lie to yourself about the work you're doing or lack thereof. So it's a trap to internally validate yourself to the degree where you start to get lots of external validation, praise, notoriety, accolades, potential income, wealth, abundance, opportunities, because we start to rely on those things and we think we're God's gift to fill in the blank. Well, we aren't, and we need to be aware of that. So how do we then move from this desire to either dominate others or be overly dependent on others in order to exert ourselves and get what we want. Well, I've got some thoughts here for you and for me. Again, this is journaling for me, guys. I write these things down. A lot of you think I'm saying this directly to you, and I am. I'm sharing this with you. Uh, but this is, a, this is a cathartic process for me. I go through this and I'm like, oh, man, these are things I need to hear. These are things I need to work on. So the first thing we need to do is we need to carve out time and be very deliberate and intentional about recognizing our flaws. Now, for me, this is one of the most painful things to do because I don't want to recognize my flaws. I don't want to see where I'm falling short. I don't want to poke holes in my character. I want to believe that I'm great and I'm doing wonderful and everything is perfect and everybody is blissfully ignorant or at least happy about life. And I come to realize that that's not always the case. So we can pretend and I have, and we can bury our heads in the sand and pretend that everything's just hunky dory and nothing is ever going to be a problem. Or we can pull our heads out of the sand and acknowledge and recognize that there are some flaws that we need to work on and they're impacting ourselves and they're impacting other people. So how do you do this? Well, I would suggest to you that you take time every single morning or evening. I'll tell you, I like the mornings because if I do it in the evening, I'm going to want to fix it, right? If I, if I know I mistreated somebody and it happens to be right before bed that I start thinking about this, I can't really do anything about fixing that problem because I'm going to bed. That person might be to sleep. It's just not a good thing for me. So I like to, to plan out my time thinking about how I'm showing up and performing in the morning, because then I have the ability to do something about it, right? So if I look in the mirror and I'm like, man, I'm fat. Well, I have all day to eat better, to make better uh, nutrition decisions. I have uh, opportunities to um, exercise, to start moving. And I can change the trajectory of my day based on where I'm noticing I'm weak. So guys, we need to feel the pain. We need to feel the sting. We need to feel the suffering. We cannot hide from it. We have to refrain from sedating ourselves to it with whatever your sedation method or drug or whatever of choice, behavior, activity of choice is. And we need to begin to feel the full weight and burden of our own inadequacies and our own shortcomings. Now, it's not to beat yourself up. It's so that you can learn and you can grow. Because the next step, once you begin to realize where you're falling short, and maybe I should give you some questions on how to, maybe some prompts if you tend to do journaling or something like that, and I will in a minute. But the next step is to then formulate a plan. All right, so you're overweight. Okay, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to eat better. 
That's not a plan. That is not a plan. It's a good idea. This is not a plan. I'm talking about formulating a real plan. Well, I'm going to eat better. What does that mean? I'm not going to eat processed sugars. Great. Give me an example of processed sugars that you're eating now. Uh, chips, salsa, uh, soda, candy. You all know what processed sugars are, okay? But you again, you have to identify it. You have to be granular about it. You can't just say, I just want to, I just want to eat better. I just, no, no. Get, grand, get crystal clear about what that looks like. Okay. And then if we're talking about nutrition, if you're going to cut out the processed sugars, what are you going to replace it with? Right? Because they're, you're going to get hungry. So what are you going to do? You're going to go snack on the gummy bears in your, in your cupboard? Probably if they're there. So maybe what you can do is you can pull all of that stuff out of your cupboard and throw it in the garbage can and never have it in your house again. That might be a thing we could do. Okay, that's going to be less likely that we're then going to partake in those processed sugars that we know we don't want to have because we look at ourselves and don't feel satisfied and happy with who we are. And therefore we're trying to get validation about our own, our own lives from other people. Well, take it upon yourself, take it upon yourself, formulate that plan, get crystal clear. If you want a plan and you want a planning tool, check out our battle planning tool. This is the one I use. And admittedly, I fall short. And even there's days, this is a thing I've created where I'm like, oh, I don't want to do the battle plan. We'll do the battle plan because that's what works. Now to go back to point number one, recognizing your flaws, maybe a couple of questions are, uh, number one is just going through four key areas of your life. Go through your physical being, your physical presence, your physical form, physical, mental. How's your headspace? Are you in the right headspace? So we have uh, physical, mental, emotional. Are you an emotional wreck? Are you an emotional basket case? Are you an emotional rock? Do you hide from your emotions? Are you not willing or able to express what you're feeling? Those might be issues. And then the fourth component is the spiritual element. Do I feel connected? Is there some sort of higher power driving me? Is there something that is calling to me? Is there something larger than myself that I can, that I can look to? Uh, another question or prompt is, who is impacted negatively by my behavior? Is my wife and my children negatively impacted by my behavior? What about my clients? What about my employees? What about my coworkers? What about my neighbors? How is my behavior, positively or negatively, impacting them? If it's positive, good. I would encourage you to keep doing that. But it's, if it's negative, okay, good. Now we have somewhere to move from, to build upon. And that's what we ought to do is think about where we can build from. All right, let's go to point number three. Now this, guys, is just execute the plan. Just do it. If you got to wake up early and get it done, do it. If you've got to make amends and, and, and say sorry to people, okay, do that. If you have to put down some sort of dependency that you have or, or put it away or... Uh, eliminate it from your life. Okay. Then do that. A lot of people will ask, well, how do you become more disciplined? When I very first had Jocko on the podcast, this was probably end of 2015, beginning of 2016 ish, somewhere in there. Uh, I asked him, how do you become more disciplined or a question of the like? And he said, you just do it. I'm like, well, <laughs> do you care to elaborate? No. What's there to elaborate on? You just do it. I'm like, okay, well, this is going to be a hard podcast. But the more I look back, that's actually right. You just do it. Now, yes, you can put systems in place and procedures and you can have accountability partners and you can have friends that you talk with and you can have all these things. People, Some people have more willpower than others. There's things like that, of course. But at the end of the day, you just have to do it. When you don't want to get out of bed, you got to get out of bed and you got to go work out or you have to walk or you have to train jujitsu. When you messed up, and you fouled up and you want to make it right, you have to apologize to somebody. You have to make it right. When you don't want to do the task or the assignment or the project or the this or the that, you just do it anyways. Prime example, this Friday field notes. Uh, I, I want to be here this afternoon for my family. I want to take the rest of the day off. And I've got a small window between calls where I can do this Friday field notes. Now in my mind, I'm like, oh, I can do it here. I can do it later. I can do it there. I'll jump in here. And I'm trying to justify procrastinating 
And if I procrastinate, then I know I'm not doing well. And then I'm going to look for others to validate me when instead I want to validate myself. How do I do that? By not procrastinating. And so even though I might be able to justify doing this podcast later, I'm doing it right now. And then what's going to happen? I know unequivocally what is going to happen is I'm going to feel better about myself because I committed to doing something and I followed through on it and I actually got it done ahead of schedule. This is how we build internal validation. We execute the plan. Now, number four is something I don't talk a whole lot about. Uh, there is a component of it I do, which is to adjust. So you fall short. So your plan doesn't work. You don't lose as much weight as you'd like. Uh, you don't connect with your wife the way you want to. You don't uh, rebuild or rekindle the relationship with your kids. You don't uh, get that promotion that you wanted. You're dealing with health issues. Like Things aren't going to go according to plan. They're not going to go the way that you want them to. And that just happens. And so we have to adjust along the way. I talk about that all the time. That's not new. But what is new is that you can congratulate yourself, guys. You can feel proud about who you are. And you should feel proud when you do something right. Now, you shouldn't wallow in pity and you shouldn't wallow in pride. If you think that you've arrived because you've done one thing great or, some, or the day went beautifully, well, you got another thing coming because you still got to wake up tomorrow and do something else tomorrow. As my uh, baseball and high school baseball and football coach, Matt Labram, used to say, you're only as good as your last at bat. Okay, great. You did something yesterday. What are you going to do today? Well, we'll figure that out. But for now, I want you to feel pride. I want you to feel satisfaction. There's a lot of people that tell you, hey, pride is the greatest of all sins and you, you should not be a proud person. And it, yes, excessively, sure. If it's hindering performance or hurting relationships or, or hurting yourself or other people, yeah, that, that's an issue. But to feel pride in completing a marathon or to feel pride in actually getting your to-do list done today or feel pride in taking your wife on a date and enjoying the evening together or feel pride on finishing a project that you said you would and maybe it's been months or even years before you completed that, congratulate yourself, pat yourself on the back. That's the internal validation. If you're not doing that, you're leaving it on the table. It's like you should be proud of yourself. So guys, congratulate yourself to the degree that it deserves. No more, no less, but feel okay with congratulating yourself. And then move on, right? Move on to something new. All right, number five is we have to now uh, commit to consistency. It's really easy to be good for a day. Got something banging around. I think my kids are upstairs. I don't know if you can hear that. It's really easy to be good for a day. <clears throat> It's really easy to be good for a week. It's really easy to be good when things are falling apart around you because you know that they're falling apart and we have to change our behavior and we have to get better in order to rebuild what, what is falling apart and crumbling around us. That's the easy time. The real test comes when it's a trial. It's a, it's a difficulty. Uh, times aren't easy. Um, or, or even when they are easy, do we coast? Do we glide? Do we become complacent? Do we think we have it figured out? Have we unlocked the key to life because you happen to get the promotion? Or you're, you just got married or you bought a new car? Have you unlocked the key to life? No, you haven't. You have to commit to consistency. So we're not looking for results as much as we're looking for consistent behavior and actions. Because if we can be consistent in a thing, the results will inevitably produce themselves over time, consistently and predictably. So be consistent. Now, the last point that I would make with you guys today, and then we'll let you get to your day and weekend is very, very important. and something that I'm learning and I'm striving to be better at. And I feel good every time I do. And that is to serve other people. We have to serve other people. There are people who are struggling. They're hurting. They're going through difficulties. They're going through challenges. They're having hardships. Their hearts are broken. Uh, their minds are consumed. Maybe they're addicted to something. Like We just don't know what people are going through. Now I get a bit of a glimpse, obviously in my own life, personally, I know what I'm dealing with. And I also get a glimpse into that with other people that communicate with me on a daily basis regarding what they're going through. And the best way to feel good about who you are is not to have all the praise and admiration and accolades and wealth and abundance and prosperity that you want. It's found in something greater than yourself, and that is to serve other people. 
That is to find somebody who's struggling and take them under your wing, so to speak, to some degree and help them, assist them, guide them, lead them, give them a bit of information they need to be able to thrive and to be able to excel on their own. And I'm telling you what, if you're, if you're a servant leader, you're somebody who wants to serve. A lot of guys will say, a lot of tough guys on the internet will say, well, you know, you're being a beta or you're being a cuck because you're serving somebody. No, I don't think so. You're being a man. That's what men do. We serve and we forget that at times. And what do we do? We serve ourselves. We become selfish. We have excessive pride. We let ego get in the way and we think we can do it all. And then things start to break down and crumble around us. And we realize we don't. And so what do we do? We go back to serving other people, back to the roots of leading like men, which is in service. Guys, I want you to be able to in internally validate yourself. I don't want you to have to be reliant or dependent on somebody else making you feel good about how you're showing up. It's fleeting. It may never arrive at all because you can't control other people, but you can control the way that you feel about yourself. It is possible through hard work, through effort, through consistency, through the six step steps I gave you today, you can feel good about who you are and then you're going to produce the results that you want. I would add one more thing, and this is something that I'm trying to get more in tune with in my own personal life, and it's the spiritual element. So I realize that I run the risk of turning a lot of you guys off as I say this, but it doesn't matter. I'll say it anyways, that you are divine and that God is proud of you and that all the validation that you need, he has already given to you. Some of it is stored as unrealized potential. Some of it is blocked and shielded by years of poor behavior or substance abuse, something that's clouding your vision, something that's keeping you from realizing who you are and what you're capable of. But God has already placed that within you and he is proud of you. And he wants you to be proud of yourself, not excessively, but so that you can serve his people. So again, I know I, I run the risk of turning you off, but it's important that I share that with you is that he is proud and he wants you to be proud of yourself. That's it, guys. That's the power of internal validation. Please let me know what you think. Shoot me a message, shoot me an email, communicate with me on the socials, which I have been off of quite a bit lately, which has been nice. It's been by design um, and it's been good. It's been really good. I've gotten more present with my wife and my kids and trying to be more engaged and active with, with them and and being the kind of father and husband that I, I want to be. And I'm following these steps just like you. And I re need reminders of these steps just like you. So let's do this together. I've never once said I've had this thing all figured out. I'm, I'm here maybe as the mouthpiece to some degree because I've got the tools and the platform and the network, but I'm here to serve. I'm here to help you win. That's what I want. All right, you guys, if you want those emails I was talking about uh, with you earlier, go to orderofman.com. Also, please, if you would, leave us a rating and review. That's a big, big help. It's a big support in boosting the visibility of what we're doing here. That's all I've got for you. We'll be back next week. Until then, guys, go out there, take action, and become the man you are meant to be.